Hi everyone, I'm Sandra and today on MapMugger, we are covering the second part of the Integration Techniques Crash Course. In the previous video, I covered some basics, integration by parts, and integration by substitution. The bulk of that was still quite standard. I went through each method and showed you step by step how to apply it to example questions. However, for this topic, the bigger challenge that most people face is deciding what method to use when you see a question. Your tutorial might categorize the questions according to what method should be applied, but in actual exams, the questions will not be labeled like that. So in today's video, I'm going to look at two very broad categories of questions and discuss how you can figure out what method to use. Within each category, there may be a lot of questions that look very similar but actually require different methods of solving. I'm going to call them integrals of the form px over qx and everything that contains a trigonometric function. By integrals of the form px over qx, I'm referring to stuff like this. I'll go through a general guide on how to approach such questions. And in this section, I'm only talking about functions containing polynomials because trigo is in the next section and other types of functions tend to require integration by parts or be of the form f'x over fx or f'x times fx to the power of n which were covered in the previous video. The first thing you may want to do is to compare the powers of the numerator and denominator. If the power of the numerator is at least equal to that of the denominator, like here is power 3, here is power 2, here both are power 2, then you can perform long division. So 2x cubed plus 1, I still like to write the 0x2 and 0x here, divide by x squared minus 2, you want to get rid of the 2x cubed, so you put a 2x here because then 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, and 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x, so 0 minus minus 4x will give 4x and bring down the 1, is still 1. So 2x cubed plus 1 over x squared minus 2 is an improper fraction, but if you want to express it as a proper fraction, after doing the long division, first you pull out the quotient, 2x, then plus the remainder 4x plus 1 over x squared minus 2. Alternatively, for easier questions like this, you can actually work out the quotient and remainder without doing long division. To divide x squared by x squared plus 1, you can think of it this way, part of the numerator is a multiple of the denominator. So how do you make x squared become a multiple of x squared plus 1? You can do a plus 1 minus 1 here because it doesn't change the overall expression. Then the first part, x squared plus 1, is just 1. And the second part, the remainder, is minus 1 over x squared plus 1. However, if you're not confident of doing this, you can still fall back on long division and either way, you'll just continue solving the same way. After performing long division, or if you cannot perform long division, you might have something like this. This is what we obtained just now after doing long division on this expression. The power of the numerator is 1 less than that of the denominator. That's a clue that is probably in the form f'x over fx or f'x times fx to the power of n. So choose the higher power as fx, and that gives f'x equals 2x. I can pull out the 2x like this, 2 times 2x is 4x, then minus 2 over x squared minus 2. Since integrating f'x over fx gives ln of mod fx, this part will become 2 ln of mod fx, which is x squared minus 2, and you can just continue on your own from here. After doing long division and the f'x over fx thing, or if you can't do it, then load the denominator and see whether you need to factorize or complete the square. That should then allow you to use partial fractions or results from MF26 to continue solving. Going back to my long list of questions, for this, you can factorize the denominator to x times 1 plus x square and apply partial fractions. Let it be equal to a over x plus bx plus c over 1 plus x square. Then you can apply whatever method to solve the partial fractions. Here I'm going to use the comparing coefficients method. So if you multiply both sides by this denominator, you'll get 1 equals a times 1 plus x squared plus bx squared plus cx. Comparing coefficients of the constant, a equals 1. Then for both the x squared and x term is 0 on this side. So for the x term, it's just c equals 0 and x squared, there's 
a x square plus b. So a plus b is 0, which makes b equals negative a equals negative 1. And therefore, 1 over x plus x cubed is equal to a over x, that's 1 over x plus bx plus c, that is just negative x over 1 plus x square. And just continue solving from there. For the rest of these questions, just complete the square. I will move straight to the completed square form, but if you need a recap on how to do it, there are plenty of tutorial videos out there, just google complete the square. After completing the square, check MF26 if any of the results can be applied. The first one here is the f prime max over fx square plus a square. The second one here is f prime max over square root of a square minus fx square. This is f prime max over fx square minus a square. And this is f prime max over a square minus fx square. Just apply the relevant result and if you need a recap on how to do that, refer to my previous video. But what if you get a question where none of the above applies? You can't do long division, you can't factorize, you can't complete the square. Here's an example. Questions where both of these don't work are probably quite rare, but if you really come across it, the first thing I suggest is try and make the numerator a constant because in most of the results that we learned, the numerator is a constant. For this question, if I want to get rid of the square root in the numerator, I'm going to multiply it by square root of 1 plus x over square root of 1 plus x because this is just 1. And the numerator will now just be equal to 1 plus x and the denominator will be 1 minus x square. And you can continue solving this using the earlier method. Let's just recap. First you try to do long division, then you try and pull out an f prime x and fx somewhere. And then you try to factorize and complete the square of the denominator and if all else fails, just whack until you can make it. Now finally, let's move on to the last section on trigo. I'm not going to go through all of these. Cosine x and sine x you should already know, and all the rest are in MF26. For the squares of these functions, the only thing you really need to memorize are integrating cosecant square x gives negative cotangent x, and integrating secant square x gives tangent x. Then to integrate tangent square x and cotangent square x, you apply this identity, sine square x plus cosine square x equals 1. Dividing throughout by cosine square x, Sine square x over cosine square x is tangent square x, cosine square x over cosine square x is 1, and 1 over cosine square x is secant square x. So tangent square x is secant square x minus 1. Now if you divide this throughout by sine square x instead, sine square x over sine square x is 1, cosine square x over sine square x is cotangent square x, and 1 over sine square x is cosecant square x. So cotangent square x can be written as cosecant square x minus 1. Then, to integrate cosine square x and sine square x, you apply this identity, which is in MF26, cosine 2x equals 2 cosine square x minus 1, equals 1 minus 2 sine square x. So, cosine square x can be written as 1 plus cosine 2x over 2, and sine square x can be written as 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. This identity can really be rearranged many ways. It can be written as 1 plus cosine 2x equals 2 cosine square x, 1 minus cosine 2x equals 2 sine square x. Anytime you see something with a 1 plus cosine or 1 minus cosine, you can actually apply this identity. So 1 plus cosine x would be 2 cosine square of x over 2, and 1 over cosine square is just secant square. And 1 minus cosine x would give 2 sine square x over 2 and 1 over sine square is just cosecant square. As you can see, it really helps a lot to be familiar with how different types of trigonometry functions are related to each other. For example, 1 over cosecant square x is sine square x. Or if I give you this, sine x over tangent x, you need to recognize that tangent x is sine x over cosine x. And then this just becomes cosine x, which is a lot easier to handle. Or if I give you higher powers, you need to split it up like this, apply the identities, and from there it becomes a lot easier to integrate. Next, how do you deal with products of sine and cosine x? If you have a cosine x with a sine x, or cosine 2x and sine 2x, or cosine 3x with sine 3x, and so on, the thing inside here is the same, then you can apply the f prime x fx to the power of n thing. Here, if fx is sine x, then f prime x is cosine x. So this expression is equal to sine 5x over 5. 
and this would be sine square x over 2. On the other hand, if the thing inside is not the same, like x with 3x or 2x with 4x, you need to use the reverse factor formula. First, I suggest writing the bigger one in front, so instead of cos x sine 3x, sine 3x cos x, instead of cos 2x cos 4x, cos 4x cos 2x. Next, when you look at this formula, you'll see that all of them require you to start with a half, except sine sine, which is negative half. Next, you need to figure out whether it's going to be sine plus sine or cos plus cos or cos minus cos. You can just memorize the reverse factor formula, but if you're having difficulty with that, I suggest referring to MF26, which is the factor formula and allows you to sort of work backwards. So sine cos, sine cos will give you sine plus sine. Cos cos will give you cos plus cos. And sine sine will give you cos minus cos. Then filling this question mark is actually quite easy. The one in front will be these two added together, so 3x plus x, 4x. The one behind is a difference, so 3x minus x, 2x. In front is plus, 4x plus 2x, 6x. Behind is minus, 4x minus 2x is 2x. Here in front is plus, 4x plus 2x, 6x. Behind is minus, 4x minus 2x, 2x. And from here you can continue solving. If you have trigo functions multiplied by other types of functions, it's most likely going to be integration by parts. These two examples are covered in my previous video on integration by parts if you need. Then, you need to be also very familiar with what integrates to what or what differentiates to what. Like, differentiate tangent, you get secant square. Differentiate cotangent, you get cosecant square and so forth. And so if you see them together, you can usually apply the f' max fx to the power of n thing. So like here, it's fx equals tangent x and f prime x equals secant square x. So this is equal to like fx to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. Or like here, you can pull out fx equals cotangent x and f prime x equals negative cosecant square x. So this will be fx to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 again. Or... For higher powers, for this one you can do integration by parts where u equals secant x and dv dx is secant square x. I guess that's all for this video. It's definitely non-exhaustive. There will be questions that cannot be solved using anything I just talked about. But I hope that these two videos on integration techniques can help you with maybe 90% of the questions out there. If you haven't done so, I highly advise that you check out part 1 of the integration techniques crash course as well. All the best for your school exams or A-levels or just life in general. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments.